Good morning. How is everyone today? It's threatening to rain here, and I hope it just does. Because <laughs> it's like cloudy out. Something feels weird about this keyboard. I don't know. It is strange. Right, Lute says it's cloudy here for the past two days. We had a little bit of rain yesterday and it was like two minutes where it poured real hard and that was it. Are we getting rain from that tropical storm, Mathman asks. No, um, it hit the gulf and it's gonna go further north. So it won't really be by us. And the other two that are out there are not gonna be by us either. So. Like, September 1st is when things get, like, that's the peak for hurricane season, and that's when we tend to get them, is after September. So, I know things aren't over yet. Hi! Hi. Oh, God. Oh. Here you go. Sorry, I'm just a, that's fine. a minute late. Do you have the uh, thing? It's over there. Oh, thank you. Again, like, you never know how dirty your glasses until these are lights. until the lights. Once you have the lights, then you're, who knows. Also, Jules is here. Hello, breakfast, my old friend. This watermelon from Publix was really good. I mean, watermelon's just been good in general. What The big one we got from, like, Costco or Sam's or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one, though. This one's super sweet. All right, Beather. Beather. Hi, everybody. I'm just a little bit late. I, uh... Bother was like, you use the bathroom now? I was like, I usually use the bathroom after the stream. And Bother was like, you use it now? And I was like, okay. <laughs> sure. I hate that, but also, at least I don't have, like, a commute to work or something, you know? Like, that makes that makes that, that situation a million times worse. Yeah. Anyway. Hope everyone's doing good this morning. I, uh, I didn't actually grab any, uh, I didn't grab any... Food. Food. Yeah. But it's it's fine. I can get something after. Jules says I commute to work emotionally. Same. No, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. For for folks that work at home, it's uh. That that's actually re like mm -hmm. the uh, the idea of preparing oneself mentally to enter into work mode. I do that. Having that's that's my planner time. Like I do, I pull out my techo and I work on some planning and. Yeah, having having a a, a mental uh, preparation for work is uh, it's actually beneficial. Sometimes it, it it's it's physical. Like if it wasn't so hot, a really good way of doing it here would be to literally take a walk. And in that respect, it ends up feeling like a physical commute, or it's like, all right, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a walk, and whenever I get back, my house will have become work. So yeah, it's actually, um, it's act it's not, a, it's not a bad idea at all. I highly recommend it. So, <laughs> Jim says, where are y'all mentally right now? Uh. I think, I think I'm doing pretty good. We've been, you know, we've we've kept slightly later hours in the past, like, week and a half. But that's okay. It's not been... It's not, it's not been unbearably late, and we've mm -hmm. been supplementing with naps, so I think we're still getting enough rest overall, so it's, it's, it's been fine. Um, and Mal's been getting a lot of work done, so... <laughs> it's not been Jules' hours. Let me read, um... 
I'm gonna need a few of these here. Uh, we got a sub from Zekel Guy. Welcome. I saw that. 32 bits from Macintosh PC says, I can actually make it to a breakfast stream. This is the first time in almost two months. How are we today, grandparents? Pretty good. Pretty good. All things considered. Um, excited about today because we're going to be doing a first 20 stream. So that's always fun. Uh, we're going to be you doing. Are. You're there in spirit. I'll be working. Yeah, but a lot of times you watch, like you have it on. Yeah. So like you're painting, but you have it on. So you know kind of what's going on. A mm -hmm. little bit. Um, let's, uh, let's just. Let's just call it 4.30 p.m. 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Got some other stuff going on before that. Um, it's a little bit later than we normally start, but none of the games that we're playing today are super long. Like, we don't got any RPGs, <laughs> so the stream might go a little bit longer than usual, but we'll, we'll just say that we're starting it at 4.30. If we start any later than that, you know... Something may have gone mildly wrong, but that's that's the uh, that's the plan. So yeah, set your set your clocks for 4:30 Eastern. It's gonna be great. We'll probably play it. Uh, we'll probably play at least five games, and I've got a good list. Oh, just as so Noah Mori. <laughs> well. One will be slightly longer. Uh, a little bit, it's a little yeah. bit longer. <laughs> 21 months from KRC David. 300 uh, bits from Depidius Bidoof. It says, good morning. Can't stay for too long as I need to prepare to move into dorms today. And of course, the best way to do that is to get an ear infection the day before you move in. I'm sorry. I hate that. But also, my... Um, all, well, I can't say all now because I've been getting them since, but, you know, most of my ear infections were related to college dorms. My first ear infections were related to college dorms, mm -hmm. so I relate to that in a very big way. It sucks. It sucks. I wish you the best. And, uh, just work through it, I guess. Depending on where you are in the journey of, of ear infection, you may have to go to the doctor. It's like a fifty. It's like fifty-fifty. That's what the doctor said last time I was there. It's like you know, fifty percent of the time you don't actually need antibiotics. Yeah. That's fifty percent of the time you do. And I was like, well, how will you know? And they're like, you'll just know. And I'm like, okay. Noted. Uh, <laughs> nine months. From Zephyr West, 35 months from Squid, 22 months from Comic Queen 96, 300 bits from Satsy, who says, uh, I'm having a day where dropping things is common, so while I'd love to make a thick pancake with all cherry and chocolate flavors, Ooh. I couldn't uh, even make coffee without spilling grinds on the floor. Crisps it is. I think we all have those sorts of days, for what it's worth. There's days where you're like, yeah, I... I attempted to do all of the human things at a reasonable human rate, and uh, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Anise asked how Justin is doing. Yeah, so, um, I, and I posted about this on Twitter yesterday, but if, if folks didn't see it, Justin's workshop burned down on... Friday night. Friday night. Uh... And it was a kind of a, for those, you might need a, just a brief reminder of who Justin is, I, I understand, because we don't see him all the time. Um, Justin is a friend I've known since high school who um, creates inc incredible, like, prop work. Uh, he's done all sorts of cool stuff over the years for, um, for the Halo series, for the Star Wars series. And actually, he has a lot... He's done a lot of work for, like, actual, like, movies and television shows, too. Like, he has the molds and does the, you know, he... He worked with that, Bungie at one point yeah. to make some stuff for... So, like, he's just done all this, like, really, really incredible stuff. And, um... I know he's been commissioned by some big people yeah. for certain things, and... Uh, 
and we've done some videos occasionally like showing off his stuff in his workshop anyway on Friday night uh, there was a freak fire and it burned down his workshop and whatever didn't get burned was ruined by heat smoke water from the fire department yeah so um it would have already been bad enough because that's how Justin makes his living is like all the stuff in his workshop but also he and his wife and his three kids were getting ready to move into a new place and they had temporarily put personal belongings in the workshop so like they're they're building a house and they had you know everything wrapped up in that and they sold their old house months and months and months ago i think almost a year at this point yeah so um yeah like uh, Laura's wedding dress, a bunch of the kids' toys, like mm -hmm. just all sorts of stuff they ended up losing in a moment. And um, that sucks. It also sucks because, you know, Justin lost the equipment he needs to do his job. Mm -hmm. Justin also had like $10,000 worth of orders to send out that he can't send out and now has to like start over on. Um, so it's... Also, like, Bad. the original pieces that he makes molds on. and Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, well, that's the other thing. Yeah. You know, there's so much stuff that, like, I, I don't know how he would remake it. So it's, um, it's really terrible, uh, just to be completely blunt. Chaz has got a link there to uh, a tweet, the tweet that I put out yesterday, and that has got a GoFundMe link in it. So if, uh, if you just watched uh, the vlogs that we made on his stuff over the years and you just thought it was always super, super cool. If you were fortunate enough to own something that Justin made, um, cause he's been selling on, on Etsy for years and years and years, mm -hmm. uh, maybe consider sending something to him and his family because like it, it really sucks. Like be, again, because it, it would suck already the fact that he would have to start over on the business side of things, which is terrible. But the fact that they lost all sorts of stuff for the family is like... Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, no one was injured. I'm going to make sure that I say that, because I know that that's important. But, um... Yeah, it's not... It, it's not great. It's not great. So, um... There's been a lot of support locally, which, yeah. is, which is good for them, because a lot of people have stepped up for, um... Local... New furniture for when their house... Because yeah. their, their house is supposed to close soon, too, so they were going Furn to be Furniture, moving. toys, local donations, and yeah. things like that. Um, but the GoFundMe is very, very helpful for getting the business side up and running, which, again, that's what Justin does for a living, so... Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Anyway, wanted to share that to make sure that, you know, anyone that didn't already know is aware. If you want to help out, you're, you're able to. All right, um, let's see here. We've got uh, 300 Bits of My Doodle, who says, I need some good vibes, please. I got a quiz in a final this week and am big stressy. Because, oh my God, I got a new cat and she is so cute. Also, Amori. I, I, I guess I kind of confirmed that it's happening today, but yeah, I'm, I am playing Omori for the first 20. What have, else, uh, have, have I confirmed? I confirmed um, Destroy All Humans, no Mori. But there will be more. Dan actually, um, Dan sent me a game yesterday and was like, I really want you to play this game. And I was like, okay. So there's another game that I would, that wasn't even in the mix. And I'm like, all right, I, sure. I can, I, I can do that. So there's, uh, there's quite a few things that are happening. It's exciting about a new cat too. Yeah. Yeah. New cats are great. They can bring you a lot of, uh, energy, joy, depending on how uh, young they are. Stress. <laughs> Kittens are are hard to... They, they can, you know... They, they can, can be a lot. They can um, run fast. And get into things. And get into mm -hmm. things. Anyway, good luck, on, uh, good luck on your quiz. Hope that goes well. We got 500 bits from Cheese Hammer. Who says, did you think I wouldn't know this? You spend Saturday making pizza with your fancy new tools, and where am I? Left on top of the cabinet to rot. Maybe next time Dan comes over, I'll talk him into stealing me. I bet he knows how to make a pizza properly with shredded cheese that's been properly hammered. You're not my real dad. You enjoy uh, the vlogs that are coming out today. Speaking of, um, 
I'm really proud of myself. Uh, I've got several things scheduled today. Um, the June mail video is scheduled for 11 a.m., so enjoy that, basically after the stream. Uh, and then I've got Sunday's vlog, which we make a traditional pizza using a a cheese hammer. Cheese hammer, you'll really, you, cheese hammer, you're really, really gonna like the Sunday vlog. Your name is literally in the title. I think you'll like it a lot. Um, but also, uh, so that the Sunday vlog is scheduled for three. Uh, scheduled for three fifteen is Monday's vlog. I'm proud of that. Like, yeah. make, like getting the vlog done before I go to bed is a big deal. I can't always do that, but I have that done. So, like, the vlogs are caught up. Feels good. Feels really, really good. I wanted to make sure I was all caught up before I did the first twenty stream, and uh, it's. it's I, I did. Good job. And the hope is that by the end of the week, I can make some progress on the next 2018 vlog, which is a doozy. Yeah. It is a doozy. I think I talked about it before, but it's an exploration of uh, many of the Smithsonian museums in D.C. And, uh... It's fun. It's just long. So hopefully I, hopefully I can get that done by the end of the week. I'd like that. 21 months from Gonza Tinkerman. We've got 26 months from Andrew in the kitchen. Uh, 300 bits from Platinum Pikachu says, Honk. On Saturday, I get to watch my first in-person football, soccer, match since March 7th last year and also my second Jabba's book for the end of the month. Normality is slowly returning. Thank goodness. Also, thanks for clarifying because football, football does mean something else in this part of the world. I know that... Yeah. I know that uh, we have a lot of international viewers folks that will die on the hill that football is for your feet and like i get it it's not it's not even that you're wrong it's just that <laughs> here it means something completely different so clar clarification is welcome how did we even get the word like football makes sense because your foot touches the ball mm -hmm. how did we get the word soccer what's the etymology behind soccer i have no idea Hand egg. Hand egg. Can you imagine a world in which we just referred to football exclusively as hand egg? And then there wouldn't be any confusion? Mm -hmm. Where were we? 18 months from Back in Red. Also 18 months from uh, my son, Jules. <laughs> Nine months from Dev Stets. 33 months from Cassie. 33 months also from Snow Res. Uh, we got eight months of Tier 2 Gold Toast from Radio Dread. 22 months from Nikki K. Lynn. 23 months from Mr. Game Boy. And then 333 bits from Muzi who says, Hope everyone is well. I am physically exhausted with day four of seven at work. Oh. Barely have enough money in the bank for food and chiropractor, but otherwise I'm okay. I'm loving this rain we've been getting. Good vibes to all. Hugs for whoever needs it. We get a little bit of rain yesterday it was like just two minutes it poured and then stopped oh you're talking about driveway no when it poured yesterday oh it only lasted for two minutes it was very quick oh i didn't know that soccer is an abbreviation of association meaning association football the formal name of soccer so we literally get soccer from the word association. That's, man, that's wild. That's really, really wild. This Shovel Knight backing track is not doing enough. I'm turning it to the next song. Fix it. <laughs> Us, a soccer. A soccer. Weird, man. I don't know. That's, I mean, I, I'm glad that there is some level of explanation just for the fact that the alternative is someone's like, I don't know, the word sounds neat. 
But if, if they really got it from the word association, they could have went... There, there's so many alternative soccer yeah. names there could have been. Because there's a lot of ways you could have went. You could have went with, like... Like... Like the C-I-A-T. Seat. Sea Otter. Sea Otter! Wow. <laughs> 500 bits. From Mr. Game Boy. He says, won't be here Friday. Plan to torture you Thursday. Pick a game from behind you. I don't usually go this far left. Let's go really far left. Brothers in arms, double time. They never asked to be squad leaders, but they had no choice. There's nothing wrong with first person shooters on Wii, but they always look really bad. <laughs> I mean, just, they never look good. They, they, They're trying their they're trying their best. They're trying their best with uh, the hardware that was allotted to them. What about the God? Oh, Godfather looks great. Godfather looks perfect. Wouldn't make a single change. Not at all. Their loot says it's shovelware. I I don't think Brothers in Arms counts as shovelware. Uh, Brothers in Arms is a fairly well known IP. There is. FPS shovelware, but there's also there. I mean, there's there's uh there's Call of Duty's. Call of Duty's is on there, and uh, there's another one. Gamer Gremlin asks, "How close are we to completing the Wii library?" Very close. Like less than ten. Less than ten. Uh, I'm gonna be making a video about that this week. So there'll be a video that talks very specifically about the I think I think right now it's nine I think it's nine exactly there'll be a video this week talking about the, the nine specific games that we're missing um, and then also a Wii update <laughs> Wii update I meant W-E-E -E. uh, a Wii update about uh, where we are on GameCube because GameCube's actually almost done done um, so that's yeah exciting so, uh, yeah. This, this Extra Life could be the full collection. Yeah, last year we were missing... I want to say... More than 30, less than 40? Sounds right to me. I was going to guess 30. Yeah, like 35, something like that. Mm -hmm. It was about how many games we were missing. So this year, much, much closer. Um, which is really exciting. Planning to collect Japan exclusively titles. Not at the moment. Are there a lot of them? I don't know. Okay. I have not looked into it at all. There's some. There's some that are that are worth picking up. Like um, Captain Runbow is one that we should probably pick up at some point. But like, there's also a lot of games. Skipping that one. There's also a lot of games that uh, you know we may not have gotten in North America, but were released in like PAL regions. Mm -hmm. So you, they're technically in English. They're just not released here, so... Yeah. And DL says, you're still going to unwrap Fire Emblem if it gets picked. I got another copy of Fire Emblem. I refused, I refused to open that sealed game, so I actually bought an unsealed version. So, I have it. There are other sealed Wii games that I only have yeah. one copy of, but they're not, there's, none of them are ones that I would feel uncomfortable opening on camera. Didn't we open... Did uh, we open one last year? Dog football? Yeah, we did. We did open... We opened... Yeah, we opened dog football. But also, dog football... They still exist. <laughs> Actually, I believe... I may be mistaken on this, but I think someone in Discord had went and found the, the seller on eBay, which is the actual company, and found that you can order, like, 25 copies at a time. Like, if you really need, like, 25 copies of dog football... I'm not sure what kind of cases they have, but they'd almost, 
it may almost be worth it for the uh, the old style Wii cases that are that don't have the recycle symbol cut yeah. out of them because they're more heavy duty. Wouldn't be the first time I bought video games just for the cases. Anyway, we get twelve months from Maya the Siren one eight two. That's a year. Twenty six months from Everchanger. Fifteen months from K nineteen ninety one. Ten months from Tipsy Taj. Uh, 15 months from Titan Tauros, 17 months from Charlemagne25, 5 months from uh, Zadoichi, 9 months from Never Challenge to Chat, 18 months from Raven Dirk, and 3 into bits from Colin who says, I wish we didn't use football for the American sport. I've heard it called Gridiron before, named after the original design of the field before we used yard lines, which is a significantly better name. I can agree with that. Gridiron sounds cool, which I really like. I also, I like hand egg. I don't think um, the football fans of the world would get behind no. hand egg. No. But gridiron, like, sounds really neat. Like, that sounds like a hardcore sport. Like, people are going to get hurt. Actually, that's appropriate. People get hurt in American football all the time. So gridiron is... <laughs> Destiny Light like says, tackle ball? There's other sports where you tackle, though, right? Like, uh, do you tackle people in, um, what's the one with the... Lacrosse? Yeah, do you tackle people in lacrosse? I've never actually seen lacrosse played. No one has. <laughs> it's it, No one's actually seen lacrosse. It's just like a... It's like a concept. I was thinking rugby. <laughs> which probably... But yet you did, like, the lacrosse. I know. I did the lacrosse thing, but I was thinking rugby. So those are separate sports, although I bet there's a sport where it's meshed together. Yeah, no one's actually... Yeah, it's a shame because people have talked about lacrosse as if it's a real sport where it's like someone's playing it, mm -hmm. but it's never been seen before. Coffee. It's like it has a mythological status. And I don't know how it's played. I have no idea. I know that there's hooked... Like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it like a net that's like this big? Like a little net on a stick? Yes. I'm describing something <laughs> that is similar yet slightly different. Have you ever seen... <sighs> Stick with me here for a sec. Have you ever seen the Fisher Price... Like, the, it's a wiffle ball... And it goes in like this little, it's like a grooved thing. And you put it in and then you whip it and it like flies out the top, it like flies out the top. That's lacrosse for children. And it's not, that's not, full, that's not normal lacrosse. Regular lacrosse has a net. What is a wiffle ball? Oh man, um, it's a it's a plastic ball that is not solid and has holes cut in the side. It's like a very very light ball. Jess says it's the Swiss cheese of balls. Holy crap! This is a real thing! J Jialai? Is that how you pronounce this? Jialai? Jialai. Yeah. What? Sorry, I've never seen this. Well, I've obviously seen it. Jialai. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, it's pronounced Hylai. The pronunciation thing has X. Yeah, I think it's pronounced Jialai. H sound? What? Can I make Wikipedia? No, it just tells you like what those sounds make. Okay, there's enough people saying it's Hylai that I'm just gonna trust them. Hylai. Hylai. A sport involving bouncing a ball off a walled space by accelerating it to high speeds with a handheld wicker 
Sesta. It is a variation of Bas Pelota. The term Hylai, coined by Seraphim Baroja in 1875, is also uh, often loosely applied to the fronton, the open-walled playing area where matches take place. It's wall ball. Like, it's a wall ball yeah. court, but it's with a with a high lie. Wild. Bagon says half the words you just said aren't real. I'm not sure of it either. Neat. Hmm. I didn't know that. I've seen those things, because I described it perfectly, mm -hmm. but I thought it was like a Fisher-Price toy. It, In fact, it well, it may have been, but it was a Fisher-Price toy based on an actual sport, Highlight. I like badminton. We did that a lot in school. Isn't badminton just like bad tennis? You got the birdie and the, yeah. the tiny little bracket. Tiny tennis, right? I played it once at the beach. We had block scheduling in school, so our classes were 90 minutes. So we would, like, do warm-ups and PE, and then they'd be like, all right, we set up the badminton nets. See you in an hour. Have a tournament. And so we did that. They taught us how to play, like, the rules and the scoring and stuff. Oh, yeah, they're called shuttlecocks. I, I've learned about that before. We actually watched... During one of our our really long kicks of uh, how it's made, we watched them make like all of the stuff necessary for um, badminton. Badminton, look, I mean, it looks interesting. I I remember I had a set as a kid because that was the thing that like tennis is too difficult for kids, but badminton is not probably because the shuttlecock stays in the air longer. It doesn't. If it goes on the ground, it's out. No, I mean, like, oh, it's, it's like lighter. when you hit it, it's easier for kids to keep it in the air. Because I, um, I remember having a badminton set and then going to the beach and batting it around. But it's probably one of the things that we played, like, twice, and then it was we never played ever again. Did I ever win? Nope. There's a lot of sports. Yeah. Like, because when you ask someone how many sports there are, they may be inclined to be like, I don't know, five? But there's not. There's like 500. Like 500 physical sports that you play with, like, your body. Let alone, like, eSports where you... Dude, then there's a million more. Like, there's more than just, like, b basketball and baseball. There's, like, so many. Like, I've never heard of High Lie, but I knew what it was. Like it Oh, Foursquare. My family plays a lot of Foursquare. Pop culture. I like I like watching extreme um, ping pong matches where the people are like, they're five feet or more, well, some of them more. It's only like ten feet away from the table, and they're still, and they're diving. Like, it's crazy, man. That's crazy. We had a lot of ping pong tables at school too. And I, I I like the concept of ping pong, but I'm not. I don't play it, so I'm not good at it. And the times I've played it, you know, you get really excited if it goes back and forth like more than three times. You're like, yes! It didn't. Yeah. It doesn't matter who who did it. You or the other person. You're both like, we did it. It bounced four times that time, and you're like, I think we should retire. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that's. Rel that's about how difficult ping pong is. It's like the world's, I think I think collectively known as the world's hardest sport. Where was I? I just liked all of the games we played in elementary school PE, where they lay out all the mats, like the gymnastic mats, and you would play alligator swamp, and someone had to be. Alligator swamp is not a sport. It's, it was just games we played in PE. Oh, I don't know. I also we don't also know had a what Alligator Swamp is. Unit. What is? Please explain Alligator Swamp. So you know gymnastics mats. Yeah. They'd spread them out all across the gym. They're like the thick mats. And it was so basically you can fall tag. On. 
so like well then call one a person would be like the alligator and could only stand on like the the floor like the floor floor but everyone else had to be like frogs on the lily pads that were the gymnastic mats and they could only step on the gymnastic mats and they'd have to jump and like and the alligator couldn't go on the mats. Oh, so you didn't have all of the mats together. No, no, it was they were like spread, spread out. out. So it's kind of like floor is lava. Yeah. So, all right, you're gonna paint a you're gonna paint a better picture of this for me. How many kids are involved? Like thirty. So it's thirty kids. Are they all on mats? All but one. The alligator is not on a mat. So how many mats are there? Um, enough to fill a basketball court. So more than there are kids? Yeah. And every kid, one kid per mat? No, you like... So they're big mats. 29 other kids, one kid is the alligator. They're like the size of this couch, maybe. Like, so do I don't know. all of the kids like move it once and there's the then the yeah, alligator just like go <laughs> so the alligator can te technically sit between two mats and like guard it yeah but then i guess they would go around yeah and go other places okay we also would play like tag but it would be on you could only walk on the lines of the basketball court or jump so you would walk like the 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 three-point line, like, and then you would like walk the outside to run away. That seems like an extremely limiting game of tag. It was fun. I liked that game. You can go straight, mm -hmm. or you can take a ninety-degree turn at certain intervals, and that's the entire. We also had like a full gymnastics unit in elementary school, where they had a balance beam, and uh, we didn't have vault, but like we would do like cheerleading pyramids, and like basic gymnastic stuff on the balance beam. Hmm. I don't remember doing any of this stuff in school. Like, I vaguely have recollections of playing um, Red Rover. And that's it. Red Rover and then the one where you hold the circus tent. Parachute. Is that what it's called? It's Which, in, in recollection, w did, was that anything? No, it's just fun. You just hold a thing and and lift it. Yeah. You don't put a kid in the middle and bounce them no, up. No, we, we didn't bounce them, but they would sit and they would just like ruffle it. That sounds awful. <laughs> or we'd like, a, or we'd they, put like play, like, um, I feel, I feel like play, when place I place balls in the middle and we'd bounce them and like try and get them all off. Okay. Maybe that was more exciting as a kid, but like explaining that to me now, I'm like, that's, that's not even a game. Everyone hold this bed sheet and wiggle the bed sheet. All right, go back to class. I'm like, that's not a game. That's not, you don't do anything. Anyway. Red Rover was dangerous. We also had these weird scooters in elementary school that had like a molded seat and it came out with these handlebars and you would sit on the seat and you would put your feet on the, um, this part of the handlebar and then they would curve back for your hands and you would drive it back and forth like this and it would go faster the faster you wiggled it. I don't remember what they were called, but they were so much fun. I don't know what. Apparently people know what you're talking about. I have no idea. What the heck? So many people had these things. They were scooters? We also had just the little rectangle scooters with the handles and the wheels and you just have to like kick. But the, those scooters, I don't know what they were called, but they were awesome. Okay. I, I don't know, man. Maybe I just went to the poor school. We didn't, we didn't have no additional accessories. I remember the circus tent and I think, God, I think we did that literally one time. And then that was it. Like we had like a swing set. They look like this. And you put your feet here. <laughs> that looks like the cockroach of scooters. <laughs> that thing, can you get that on screen? People need to see this. Roller Racer Deluxe, Flying Turtle. I'm just gonna find a photo and post it. Here, this is how you sit on them. What the heck 
is that? Mal Mal's got a photo coming your way. Hold on a sec. I've never seen this in my life. Not not once. It's very, um, very but strange looking to me. But yeah, you would wiggle it, and it would drive faster the faster you wiggled it. I mean, I believe you. It's like this little thing low to the ground, and you, you put your feet on it, and you wiggle, and that's what generates the speed. Yeah, I have never... We had those at school? Yeah, they had like six of them, and if we had a free day... Those six were gone right away. <laughs> Thanks, NDL. <laughs> I don't have very many memories aside from video games. It's true. It's true. Although I would definitely remember that. And I do not remember that. That's not... Night Owl says, yours had handles like that? Ours were on the side. We had those two, the rectangle ones, that you would like... You had both types? Roll your fingers over. You know, they're just like a rectangle with wheels on the bottom, and they're handles on the sides, and you'd sit on them and hold the handles and just, like, kick. I'm trying but to think of But the fancy ones, any... we only had, like, eight, maybe? Whole school or just your class? It was in the PE room. Well, gym. So, like, when it would be time for gym once a week, you would go down to the gym, and then they would do basketball, or we had a gymnastics unit. Or we'd get a free day sometimes and get to play with whatever we wanted. Yeah, we didn't have any, um, like, stuff. There was yeah. no stuff. It was like, there was a playground. And that was it. Like, I don't think we had any, like, things for other stuff to do. It was just like, you know. Didn't you have gym class, though? What grade are we talking about? Any grade. That's a, there is a difference between gym class and PE. PE exists when you're a child. Gym class exists when you're in like high school. No, ours was PE in high school because it was physical education. We didn't, I, like I did and not. it was gym in elementary. I didn't have gym in middle school. In middle school we had PE. We didn't have gym until I was in ninth grade. So we did not have any sort of like and P.E. was not education, even though it's in the title. Like, P.E. was just... Go play. Sparks is asking what's the difference. And other people may have different experiences in the U.S., but my experience was... Gym was like... Gym was you had a teacher who was there to teach you physical education stuff like we're going to like they had a general idea about like athleticism and sports and stuff PE was your normal teacher was like go play it, that, See, that, was, that was it that was the whole experience in elementary it was specifically called gym like we were like oh it's gym time and we'd go to the gym and it would be either about sports or just activities to get us moving. KAC Fangirl says, Steven, you mean recess. Sure. But oh, those... that was separate. What? That was separate. Like, you you know how you had music class? You have music in elementary school? Yeah. And you go to the music room? We had that. We had that for art, and then we had that for gym. But it was like physical activities. And then we had recess after lunch, and then we also had a morning and afternoon recess. To me, PE and recess are identical. No. Gym is different. No. Recess is different from... PE and gym are the same to me. It sounds like it's just a wording yeah. thing. Because you have the thing where a teacher who is hired by the school to teach physical movement... That's gym or PE or whatever. And then you have recess, which is go play. Take a break. Take a break. <laughs> go play. Run around. Mm -hmm. Let me let me catch up let me catch up on some alerts here, because we're we're behind a little bit on alerts, but we can revisit this because this is all very important information. Thirteen months for Spooky Boy River. 
We got three hundred bits of mine out of spell clam. It says, if we're doing language stuff, can we talk about how U.S. says flashlights, but U.K. says torches? What's the U.K. word for torch? Torch. See, you know, you gotta have different words. Do you, oh, does it? Does the U.K. say electric torch? Boogie woogie woogie. <laughs> they should say electric, electric torch. Personally, I think that would be a really good. Um, a really good uh, way of we call them both torch. Well, you shouldn't because if you if you tell me that you're going to hand me a torch, I'm going to become immediately concerned. It's like oh that we don't need a torch here. I just need I just need a flashlight. Spark says, "What do you mean by torch? A torch a torch is a stick on fire. <laughs> In the U.S., a torch is a stick on fire. So." If you, if you, you know, if you're here and you ask for a torch, you're not going to get one. So people are like, well, you, why do you need a torch? You don't need a torch. Flashlight is for... Captain Gazpacho says, I just think of a blowtorch. Steven means like, a, like the Olympic torch or... Yeah, like that's a medieval a torch. torch like. Torch and blowtorch are also super different. Or like the thing they would light in Indiana Jones movies going into temples. Penguin Frogs is Minecraft torch, which is perfect. Yeah. If you've played Minecraft and you've made a torch, that is a torch. Torch. Mm-hmm. Brandon. <laughs> Sorry, this was important. The survivor torch, yeah. There are things that I personally feel that different countries do better for language. Mm-hmm. But I think, as a general rule, specificity is more important. So, like, if you have words for specific things, that's better. So this is one where I'm going to give the U.S. The, 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 the point on this one, because, like, being able to be more specific on what you're talking about is just a better thing. As opposed to, is the torch have batteries in it, or is it on fire? And I'm like, those are kind of important. You kind of want to know which one's which. Where was I? 19 months from item crafting live. Uh, I now spell clam gives us up to gamers 00700. We get 100 bits from Willow Wisp. 30 months from Marty Griff 1980. And 300 bits from Night Owl who says the quick the kickball games used to get really intense in my elementary school. Scoring an inside uh, the park home run was the highlight of third grade. Our gym teacher was always the pitcher when we do like kickball. Yeah. And like. Like, he'd let the kids pitch for a while, but eventually he'd be like, all right, let me take over. And then they'd be all, like, perfect, and we'd all be able to kick them. See, we played kickball, but, like, that was the thing. We had we had balls. We did that, too. Like, that was it, though. We had the soccer ball, and we had the kickball, and we had the for basketball. Recess? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no, no. For, for, I mean, for recess, sure, but for gym. Like, that was... We did that, too. You, yeah, but you were like, we had these old scooters and wiggled yeah, around on it. that would be like... How often? Once a quarter, we would get a free day and get to play with stuff like that. Coffee! Did you play Red Rover? Yeah. Any kid ever break anything? No. I mean, we played dodgeball. We did all sorts of stuff. We played dodgeball a lot. We, we played dodgeball a lot. In high school, it was basically like, we're either going to play a sport and here go play, or we're going to the weight room, <laughs> see you in an hour. <laughs> and we'd go to the weight room, and like the girls would go all on the treadmills and the bikes, and the guys would like lift weights. Yeah. And that was it. Walter says, I mean, your school also had that weird driver's head guy. Fair. He didn't really, he, well, he didn't actually work for the school. He's just like, he had his own business and the school hired him. It was fun. Did we have bowling? No. No. You could have a bowling ball, but like, where would it go? You'd have to have a bowling, we don't have the bowling alley. We did have golf. We did have, uh, we did have golf. I mean, we had a golf team, but it wasn't part of a class. Like a sport yeah, team. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a sport. It wasn't a class, but yeah, we had a golf team, which is probably appropriate for where we live. Yeah. I'm blown away that there are multiple people that head bowling. Holy crap! What? 
I didn't even know that there was a school that had bowling alleys. That's incredible. That's amazing. <laughs> Space Fixin, close on the mark there. I had a teacher named Mr. Bowling. Mr. Game Boy says, our school made it so if you were in marching band, you didn't have to take PE. I'm so jealous of that. <sighs> Man. It's, a, it's so interesting because, like, there's not a unified schooling experience at yeah. all. Like, depending on, depending on where you lived, your schooling experience was just so different. Spark like, says that their school had a swimming pool. And, like, Appleton East had a swimming pool, but we didn't. So, like, if you wanted to be on the swim team, you would actually go to the other school and be on their team. But you'd still go to school at our school. Yeah, we we And when they no, built my high pool. school, they had, like, a referendum, and the voters for the school district voted. And it was like, do you want a pool or a weight room? And, like, everyone voted weight room, so that's why my school has a weight room. It feels like a weight room has easier maintenance. They can also, like, have it open in the summer and charge, like, a daily pass for the community and make money. For the weight room? Yeah. They do it for the pool, too, a lot. But it was easier with the weight room. Jeez, man. That's... That's just crazy. Hearing about bowling alleys and swimming pools and all this, I'm just like, that is wild to me. That's just... My high school just built an indoor football area, like, with grass and everything. We also had, we also had to take an, you, we had to take an elective, and the only elective Coffee. was music. Was was uh, choir, so you know, different places mm -hmm. have different things. Uh, Three hundred bits from my now spell clam, which says, "Fun fact: Speaking of specificity in language, in Tamil, we have unique words for aunts and uncles based on how they're related to us. For example, mom's younger sister versus dad's sister versus mom's elder sister. That's wild." And like that's, I mean, I, I like the idea of having even more specific words. I think that's fun. In the case of, of the torch thing, I've, I feel like, me speaking for all of the UK here, I feel like they should at least call them electric torches. Because then you have, it's, you, while you don't have a specific word for it, you've at least separated it. He <laughs> says, it's context. No, it's not. It's not context. If it's dark and I say, hand me a torch, you don't know what I need. Do I need fire? Do I need light? You don't know. Dark Overlord says, we don't normally have fire torches. I think that's where the big, the big thing is. Because, like, in the U.S., like, we have, like, we use fire. We buy fireworks and we launch fireworks and you might, you might need a torch. There might be an opportunity in your life where, like, I need a torch. I feel like, in general, the, the people that live in the, U, the UK are, are um, safer than in, in, the, in the US because, like, there's, there's things that we have access to that we, I don't know, that we should. And, and, and like, that's why I'm like, well, you, we might need a real torch. And the people in the UK are like, when would you ever need a torch? And I'm like, I don't know. There's been times. There's been times. There's times. <laughs> Matches are too small. They're mini torches. <laughs> what is this? A torch for ants? <laughs> like what if you need to what if you need to like explore a cave? You might want a torch. I feel like a flashlight would work better, but you might want to. I gotta move on. We got, <laughs> we got 350, 350 bits from Bella Bunny with just a cheese emote, and then 350 bits from Bella Bunny with just a hammer emote. And that's gonna become relevant today when, when, you, the vlog when comes you watch out. the vlog that comes out today. So, you know, stay, stay, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, 300 bits from Shinoth says, Since we're getting a Pokemon Direct tomorrow, I thought I'd bring back an old game. Which of these Pokemon is fake? Blacephalon, Chestnut, 
Dolphorine or Dewblade? Blacephalon is real, only because I vaguely remember that word coming out of Emil's mouth. Chesnot also feels real. Dewblade? That's the one I'd sounds, say is not. Dewblade sounds real to me, so I'm going to say Dolphorin. Dolphorin sounds like a dolphin. Dolphorine? Do, it sounds like a dolphin on um, methamphetamines. So meth dolphin. So I'm pretty sure meth dolphin is not real. Meth dolphin's not real. Yep, sorry. Got this one right. Nuh-uh, meth dolphin. Not until Gen 10. Uh... <laughs> Brandon. It's a good learning experience, really. Ten months from Evil Half Dead. 500 Bits from Chemist 2020 says, My high school also had a trap shooting team at one point. I forget how they did it, but it was interesting how it worked. Our school didn't have a sh shooting team? Really? Yeah, our school didn't have a shooting team, which is actually kind of odd based on the, not to say anything of the area, but, you know. We had archery at the school I taught at. Oh, we didn't have archery. I mean, like, everyone at our school, not everyone, that's overgeneralization, but a lot of people at our school had guns. A lot of people brought guns to school just because they were hunters and they just kept them in the trucks or whatever. So, like... Oh, that would have been a uh, expulsion when well, I taught. Well, <laughs> it's a very, yeah, it's a very different, it's a very different experience. Um... So, like, they could have had a... They could have had... And Cheapen says actual guns? Yes. <laughs> Again, different parts of the world, even different parts of the U.S., very different experience. Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, they went hunting and they just... Sometimes they'd get up early in the morning and go hunting, like, with their family or whatever, and then they would come to school, or they'd know they'd be going after, so... It's just... It's just a thing. It's... Different, different parts of the U.S. are very different. Um, but we could have had a shooting team based on that. Because so many of the... Um, <laughs> you have guns, no, I should ever hand you a torch. <laughs> uh, you know, it's... We, we, could, we could have had one because so many... Like, people in my class, like, they, they had been hunting since they were, like, four. Like, I, I remember mean, seeing pictures and stuff of them. We people who would like, go hunting. Children during deer season like yeah. there were certain kids whose families were very into that and they would get a couple days off it's like a thursday friday and go hunting during mm. deer season i did not hunt no i never hunted um which is to some extent it might be a little unusual actually because my dad grew up my dad is a my dad's a farm boy my dad grew up on a farm took care of animals um went hunting with his dad uh, for, for all intents and purposes, lived in the woods. Yeah. I mean, like that was yeah. that was my dad. Yeah. And um, I mean, the closest fast food restaurant to where that is is still like forty five minutes away. Yeah. Today. Um. So like that that was you know that was my dad and that's how I grew up and um, I think it, in some respects it, it's actually kind of weird that I didn't end up doing any hunting or anything. I think that my mom just really didn't like the idea of hunting. Yeah. And I think once they started dating, um, or certainly like once they were married, I, I think that it was just like a mom was real. I think mom was really mortified at the idea of like bringing home yeah. an animal that you just shot. Mm -hmm. And you know, to dad, it was just like this is part of like growing up. And I think my dad just kind of stopped doing it. So maybe that's why I didn't end up doing any sort of um, hunting. So, And yeah, my mom's a vegetarian. Specifically, she's a pescatarian. She'll eat fish. Some um, fish. Some fish. She's, she's very uh, very specific. But uh, yeah, and I'm sure that that played a part. Because she's a vegetarian by um, choice. Like, it's just a... Uh, she doesn't mind preparing meat for, like, us to eat, but she's really grossed out mm -hmm. by the whole thing and doesn't really like to... That's actually how she became a vegetarian, is she... She had to prepare food, and she's like, I, I just don't like this, and I was like... Well, she even when she was a kid, she wasn't fond of it. 
Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to her growing up, yeah, she did not grow up vegetarian. She grew up in a in a household that's like you gotta clean your plate. And I remember my mom telling stories about how she had some difficult, you know, dinners where like she was like, I I just can't do it. You know, I can't finish this. And she watched like a video on. Uh, they showed him a video in school on like hot dog production or something and it like she was like I'll never eat a hot dog again and like she never did so she was just really um uh really affected by by all of that stuff so that's yeah. that's how that all ended up happening anyway but I like I and me growing up I think the interesting thing is and I was actually talking with this um about this with Nikki and Austin recently is that we really didn't eat a lot of beef growing up we ate, uh, we ate a lot of chicken, um, but it really we didn't eat a whole lot of beef, whereas Mao's family growing up ate a fair bit of beef. Yeah. And, uh, like, I didn't have a, um, I didn't have a hamburger until I was 13 years old. And that that's the story that I told Nikki, because she hadn't heard it. Um, I was with Austin and his mom, and we were going through a Burger King drive through and I was 13 years old, and I had literally never had a hamburger before, and I'd never been to a Burger King. And, uh, you know, we're going through the drive-thru, and his mom's like, you know, what do you want? And I'm like, I've never been to Burger King. And, you know, she just stared at me, and it's like, well, get a, you know, get a hamburger. And I'm like, I've never had... <laughs> never had a hamburger. <laughs> you always got chicken nuggets. Yeah, like we, uh, you know, it's not that I didn't eat meat growing up. We ate meat, and like we, ha I would have spaghetti with meat sauce yeah. and stuff. But like, I had just never had a hamburger, and I was thirteen, and you know, I was like, okay, so I got either a hamburger or a cheeseburger. And it was, I, you know, I didn't hate it. I was like, yeah, okay, this is fine. It's just different experiences. Yeah, I guess, and then you started getting hamburgers out of trash cans. It was just a few short years later. I like the nuggets, man. I like the chicken nuggets. You can dip them in a sauce. Even to this day, go to a fast food. I, like, every once in a while, you go to a fast food place, I'm like, give me that nugget. Sometimes there's ads for McDonald's, like, for the 50-piece right? chicken oh, McNuggets. Oh, my God. And Steven will be like, I want McNuggets. And I'm like, well, go on. The other day, we actually went and He's through... like, are you going to get some? And I'm like... No. The other day we actually went through a McDonald's drive-thru. Haven't done that in a long time, because I generally only do that on whenever we're, like, traveling. But I need, I just needed, it was somewhere between, I think we were between lunch and dinner, and I was like, I just need something, I'm mm -hmm. gonna get a McDouble. And as we went through the drive-thru, they had a little sign-up that was like, 40 McNuggets and two large fries for however much money. And I just stared at that, and I was like, I'd already, they had it after you already ordered. And I was like, that sign's not doing you any good. I've literally already ordered. What? I really want some chicken McNuggets now. Go on. Go get them. Maybe we'll get some soon. They're they're just they're not even they're not even that great. No, they're not. They're really not. Like there are better better places to get chicken McNuggets. Well, not chicken McNuggets, but chicken nuggets. And there's restaurants that do chicken nuggets. They're real and I feel like most people would agree. Like they're not even that great, but there's something about them that's either nostalgic or it scratches a very specific itch. The breading, the breading on a chicken McNugget from McDonald's, it's a very specific crispness. The sauces are all good. It's got McDonald's. I don't usually get um, uh, barbecue sauce at places, but like barbecue sauce at, at McDonald's is so good. Like there's just. <sighs> yeah, hashtag not sponsored. That being said, McDonald's, email me. Specifically, email me a coupon for your chicken McNuggets. You know, you know what we actually I, we went to Mc, uh, McDonald's for all the time as a kid, hmm. and this is usually the menu item that most people avoid: the filet o fish. That was my mom's favorite thing to She'll get. She'll still get it. 
Yeah, no, no. If we if if for whatever reason they're at the McDonald's for whatever, like that's what my mom gets is the fillet of fish, and uh, because of her, I grew up eating that. So that was what I ate at McDonald's when I was a young young kid. Yeah, I got the the kids meal. The minute that I grew out of that, which was pretty early because I was a big boy and I needed more food, I got the fillet of fish. To this day, I still like the fillet of fish. See, we always. I gotta go to a McDonald's now. I hate this. It's 10 a.m. on a Tuesday, and I'm after the stream. I'm like, we could just drive, we could just drive to the McDonald's and get a fillet of fish and a 50 McNugget, and like we'll be set. We'll be good. Yes, you will be set. See, we would, we had swim lessons on Thursdays or something. What have I done? Yeah. Um, and on the way home, we'd get French fries. I like, yeah, I like, I like, I like the fries. Or the McDonald's by us. I don't know if it was a nationwide thing. On Sundays, they'd have like 50 cent cones or something. And you can get like the cake cone. And we'd go and just get ice cream. Did yours have waffle cones? No. Okay. So you, when you say cake cones, you mean that's the only cone they had? Yeah. Okay, just clarifying. I don't know, you were talking about special scooters you rode at school. I didn't know if Wisconsin had waffle cones at their McDonald's. No. Lord have mercy. Culver's did. All right, I've got some more things i got to read here. <laughs> keep, I keep, it's so weird because it never happens ever. You haven't eaten this morning. You're hungry. That's it. That's it. I didn't have anything coming up here. I'm hungry, and talking about McDonald's is like... I do want it though. I want it so bad. Let's go. You serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Where was I? We also like well we have dinner. We have dinner, dinner set. Dinner set. Okay. I made chili yesterday. We also gotta take your dad that chili. So, so we gotta go out anyway. We gotta go out anyway, so we guys we gotta take him that chili. That we gotta take him that come chili. Get it otherwise. We no no he didn't I don't think he said that. So we got we have to we have to go out to take him the chili. So while we're while we're out, might as well just swing by. It's so convenient. It's because he lives in the McDonald's. So like, it's, it's this, where was we? Three hundred bits manager at the kitchen says, Stephen, please continue to reinvent the British language and anger spritz on this Tuesday afternoon. Did you know that potatoes over here can have jackets? It keeps them toasty. I don't know what that means. Is that what you call the aluminum foil around a potato? I think it's the skin. Okay. That's interesting. Jacked, a jacket potato is a baked potato with skin on. See, that's clever and fun. Spark says you haven't had a jacket potato. Oh no, we always have it. I eat the skin, but that's, we don't have a word for it. It's just a baked potato. Yeah, a baked, like, because no one would serve a baked potato without the skin. That would be insane. Like, if you went to a restaurant and you ordered a baked potato and it had no skin, you'd be like... Now you can get, like... What? Potato, like, without skin, like, chopped or diced. Oh my god, I have a question. I have a question. Do you guys call potato skins potato jackets? Maybe, I don't, I, I don't know if you have a concept for a potato skin. A potato skin is, uh, it's a. You do a baked potato. You do a you baked scoop potato. Scoop out the inside. And then you put cheese, sour cream, and bacon on it. Dude, potato skins are hardcore great. Only applies to jacket potatoes. Oh, that's a shame. There should be jacket potatoes, but then there should be potato jackets. You go to the TGI Fridays. That would be confusing. Yeah, that's the word order. It makes sense. See, I like twice baked potatoes. Yeah, those are good. I mean, you can't go wrong with potatoes. With potatoes in general. I need some more. You guys don't I have, have potato in don't my have throat. Potato skins. Well, no. Spark says potato skins are young, so I think Spark has had potato skins. Okay. Maybe they're not very common Do over there. Do you want anything? I have a tickle in my throat. Do I want anything? No, I don't want any food because I'll lose the craving I have for McNuggets. And I want to keep them. I want to keep that craving. Will you explain twice baked potatoes? <sighs> you make a baked potato, you scoop out the inside, mash it, put it back in, and then toast it. It's a baked potato with a lot of extra work. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. 
Like it's it's good, but it's just it's just a lot of extra work. Again, it's fine. It's like a special thing. If you go to a restaurant and they're doing it, so you don't have to do the work, then they, they can do it. That's interesting. Sparks says potato skins are a common starter at Italian restaurants. Oh, I do not associate that with Italian restaurants at all. Potato skins here are very much a, like, American cuisine thing. You're going to find potato skins at Chili's, at TGI Friday's, at Applebee's. Like, that's where you get potato skins. Like, an Italian restaurant would not have potato skins. If you asked an Italian restaurant for potato skins, they would just be like, what are you talking about? That's not, that's not what we have. We have... Pasta? Pasta? God, I want potato skins now. I don't want potato skins as much as I want chicken McNuggets. I want chicken McNuggets more. But I'm thinking about potato skins now. My apologies to everyone who attends <coughs> breakfast stream or even sometimes the Friday night streams. And like you attend, and then by the time you're done, you're like, well, I have to go get this now. You know, there's been times people have like, they were talking about ice cream, gosh darn it, and I had to go buy, to go to the gas station buy some ice cream. <laughs> Rachel says, what's your sauce of choice for uh, McNuggets? Um, prob probably barbecue. Probably barbecue. And again, I'm not a I'm not a barbecue sauce guy. There are people that they're like they are barbecue sauce people. I'm not that guy, but. I really like the barbecue sauce at McDonald's. Um, as a, just like in general for sauce, I'm a honey mustard person. Definitely a honey mustard person. Like overall, over all fast food places, you know, that's what I usually go for. <laughs> Mel says your superpowers influence. <laughs> Can you imagine if we were sponsored by McDonald's? They'd owe me so much money. I'd be like, we're telling people about your chicken McNuggets because I didn't have cereal this morning. So now I'm up here just craving this crap. Uh, ranch is a good choice too. Ranch, ranch goes good with everything, man. Ranch is so versatile. What was, what was going, what was going on? Oh yeah, uh, 13, 13 months from Aeronautical GG. 300 bits from Sparks who says, I don't know if anyone mentioned, but it's on topic kind of. Last Friday stream, there was a part that included an uh, abergine, which y'all call eggplants. Let's find out who says which and how to pronounce. Yeah, so we saw that in the in the game because we were playing It Takes Two. And I, I guess it's pronounced abergine? Abergine? I think a a abergine? I don't know. Abergine? I don't, we don't call, we call them eggplants. So, aubergine? I can tell you with 100% with certainty, 100% certainty that that was the first time I've ever seen that word written and have ever heard of that word ever was on Friday. Never in my life have I, have I seen that or heard that word. They've always been eggplants. Yeah, that was the first time. And like, we we grew up eating egg, well, I, I eat eggplant occasionally. My mom got eggplant a lot. So like, it was always eggplant. I have never in my life heard Auber, uh, aubergine. Yeah. I don't know if that's if that's a regional thing or not. Like maybe folks in the southeast. Well, I can't say that because the, the problem with making generalizations like that is that you're always going to have someone here from a certain part of the country that I name that will know it. And without a larger data set, it's impossible to know if it if it's truly regional. That's the problem. <laughs> Night Owl says, "Now you've done it. I just ordered an egg McMuffin. It's a good choice. Do they still have the ones that um?" The breakfast sandwiches where it's like a, what is it? Where the bun is a pancake? Is that what, the McGriddle, is that it? I think it's a McGriddle. I think I only ever had it like one time. I don't even remember if it was good. 
I just remember the concept being like, interesting, interesting. The bread is pancakes. Okay, so it still exists. Does KFC, that, sorry, I'm jumping around a lot. Does KFC still have the, the Doomsday Plather sandwich? The one where, it's not called Doomsday Platter Sandwich. I just feel like if you're eating it, you're aware of the end of the world. Um, the, yeah, the Double Down. Do they still sell the Double Down? The child is very cute downstairs. <laughs> is he? Let me post this, because he's ultra cute this morning. Okay. It feels like they may have retired the Double Down. All right, I'm going to get through these alerts. We'll talk briefly about the Double Down, and then we'll... And then we'll we'll wrap up for the day, so I can go get my McDonald's. Oh my God! He was sitting like that, and I oh was my just, he let me baby. pet his belly, and he was just sitting there. Did like you post that. it? I did. An absolute child. Look at my son. Oh, I love him. God, what a quality belly. Oh, quality belly. I was petting him, and he was happy. And then I walked away to get my water, and he was like, where are you going? And he was Such sitting there like that. I feel bad he did not bless the stream with his presence this morning, but perhaps Thursday. Oh, what a cute boy. Uh, oh, here's a question real quick. Did you, had you heard of aubergines? Yeah, it's an eggplant. Cool. 12 months from the great perhaps. That's a year. And he says, can you touch the belly without getting bit or clawed? Yes. Yeah. Kepler yeah. will let you. If he doesn't want it, he'll just flip over. Sagan would just be like, whatever, do touch belly, touch feet, touch toes, do whatever. Yeah. Neither neither cat has ever been... Um, the, there's no clawing and no biting. Yeah. Period. Like, full stop, 100%, no clawing, no biting of humans. It just doesn't happen. Um, we didn't run beans, did we? Yeah. I run beans. Beans! Uh, Kepler has to be in a mood, though, to let you, like, really pet on his belly. If he doesn't want it, he'll just flip and, like, yeah. he's like, I'm done. But he, I mean, as a general rule, he likes it. Yeah. Upst when he's upstairs in my lap, a lot of times I reach down, and he'll be usually laying on his side, and I'll reach down and I'll go... <laughs> That's, honestly, he usually starts purring when I yeah. do that, so... Yeah, but different animals are different. It's it, it's kind of a, a stereotype of cats is that they do not like belly rubs. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that helped us is that we had Captain Sagan since they were babies and being able to constantly touch them and rub them and like... Steven always plays with their ears. So like we have no trouble cleaning ears. You would play with their paws. Mm -hmm. Sagan had no trouble getting his claws cut, but Kepler is not as... Not a big fan. Yeah, he's sometimes he's pretty good about it. Uh, Five Hundred Bits Mr. Game Boy says, "So I know you have a favorite. What restaurant has the best ranch?" I don't have a favorite actually. I feel like for the most part, ranch is. I, I feel like ranch doesn't change a whole lot from restaurant to restaurant. I feel like certain restaurants have like very different consistency. I don't and flavor. get it enough to know. I yeah, I feel I feel like. <laughs> Ranch. Ranch never changes. Like, different restaurants have different ideas of, like, honey mustard. Yeah. For sure. There's been places I'm like, what are you doing? Um, but I, th I feel like ranch is actually fairly consistent. You know what I really like to get, and very few places have this. Bojangles is a place that you can get this, and that's horseradish. Yeah. I love horseradish, especially for chicken. And if a restaurant offers it, I'll usually get that just because it's... Available? Red Robin. I don't think I've ever had ranch at Red Robin. But the, the if I was at Red Robin, I probably wouldn't order something that required ranch. Maybe next time I go, I'll, I'll get like a chicken sandwich and then I would do that. Yeah, well, yeah, Arby's has horseradish because they sell roast beef. Generally, horseradish is reserved for roast beef. But I really like horseradish for literally every other thing. <laughs> I want Bojangles. Fries. I don't good. want McDonald's. I want Bojangles. We can go to both. 
<laughs> Three to bits of sparks just says, so what flavors are your McFlurries? UK has Maltesers McFlurries, Oreo McFlurries, Smarties McFlurries, Twix McFlurries, and Mars Bar. I do, I've, I've, M&M and Oreo are the ones I remember, but I haven't I have, been. I ordered a McFlurry when they came out. Like when they debuted, like mm -hmm. 20 years ago. With the straw? Yeah, and that's it. I, I, I feel like I've had one. I've probably had one McFlurry. So I, I'm not qualified to answer, but chat can answer. We definitely don't have Maltese or McFlurries, I'll tell you that. And I don't... Do we have Whopper McFlurries? That'd no, be our closest don't. alternative. Uh, three minutes from Jared Dillon, who says, Hearing about the Double Down reminded me of a burger where the buns are just grilled cheese sandwiches that the local uh, restaurant here did. Did I imagine that... Yes. I don't think I did. Hold on. Did I imagine that they'll do that at the... Uh, what's the uh, West Coast... Chain in and out. In and out. I don't know. Does In and Out do that? No, it's not In and Out. It's um, Five Guys will do it. Yeah, Five Guys. Five Guys will, will do it. Will do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, maybe In and Out does it too. I don't know. But at Five Guys, if you ask them to do that, they'll do it. I've never done that. I would do that. Renee's been craving a patty melt. That was one of my go-tos at Culver's when I worked there, was a patty melt. I don't love Steak and Shake, but Steak and Shake has a good patty melt. If you're if you're there. If you're at it if you're at one. Yeah. God, we've talked about I cannot do breakfast stream hungry. I can't do it. Yeah. I want everything. It's not Oh Lord. Alright, you gotta finish up. Five months from Leaf four seven three. Uh, two months from Squeakabro, and three and a bits from ZSR and says, Greetings, grandparents. Something to report. Ever wonder who's the most popular Fire Emblem character? Apparently, it's the gatekeeper from Three Houses who won Choose Your Legends by 30,000-ish more votes than Marth. Oh. Sorry, Marth. You're not going to be in the, in the next Smash Brothers. We're going to get the gatekeeper. Did you know there's like a thousand Fire Emblem characters? Like, legit. Like over, there's like over a thousand Which named. Which one did you kill? I don't know. Blake, Todd, 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 Blake. Boyd, thanks, Boyd. Shadow Lance. Todd wasn't that far off. Yeah, Boyd. It's fine. He's fine. <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. I mean, he's not. He's dead, but. It was great. That was one of my favorite moments from that extra life. Trying very, very hard to kill Boyd in Mission 1. It's actually funny because there's unique dialogue that people probably never get to see. Because how on earth would you manage to kill Boyd in Mission 1? But I, I did it, and there's all this special dialogue. It's like, I can't believe Boyd's dead. Anyway, um, all right, we're going to wrap up here. Uh, I guess I'm going to McDonald's, Jesus. Uh, today... We're aiming for 4.30 p.m. Eastern, so uh, ask your cellular, cellular device to um, remind robot. you. Your pocket robot. Your pocket robot. We're going to be playing a variety of games. Um, we're going to be playing uh, Destroy All Humans, Omori, and several other games. We're going to be playing, uh, like I said, probably five. Probably five games. So um, I look forward to it, and we'll, we'll try them out. Yeah. See whether it's... Uh, you will. Yeah, I'll try them out. And then I'll tell you about them. That's what will happen. Uh, there might be voting. Yeah, I'll probably let you guys vote on... on. Like, I'll, I'll take two that we could go either way, and I'll let you guys decide on one of them. I'll probably do that for one of them. Yeah. Okay. All set. Thanks for being here. Have a wonderful Tuesday, and I'll see you later today for First 20 Stream. And don't forget that I've got... Um, uh, mail video coming out in 30 minutes. Uh, a lot of books. And uh, then later today, before the first 20 stream, vlogs will be all caught up. Really excited about it. All right. Have a wonderful Tuesday. See you later today.